Hi everyone, welcome to another Procreate tutorial. This is the drawing that we will be completing in today's video. If you are new here, I mainly post Procreate tutorials, so if that is something you are interested in, go ahead and subscribe. Otherwise, before we get started, the only thing that you will need to do is download the color palette, which I have linked in the description below. It's totally free to download, just go ahead and open the file that downloads and it'll automatically pop into procreate with all the colors that we're using so that you can follow along for today's video so take a second to go and grab that and then come back and we'll get started okay first things first let's go over our canvas dimensions we are doing 10 inches by 10 inches at 300 dpi and the color profile that we're using is the second one on the rgb list and by the end of the video, I believe we have about 10 layers that we've used. So you don't need many. If you do need more layers, you can lower your DPI to get more. And then this is how you can check how many that you have available. So once you get that set up, we will go ahead and get started. This is our color palette. There's quite a few colors. A lot of them are just different shading and highlighting colors. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we'll do is fill in the background color. So let's go to our layer menu, click on this background color layer, and we will click on the first color on the color palette. And then right away, we are gonna add our circle outline so that we kind of know what, where we're drawing and what is being shown. So let's be on layer one. We will go to our color palette, select the last color on the last row, and then let's go to our brush, find the calligraphy tab and the monoline brush. And I have mine at 100%. Doesn't really matter, we're just going to draw a circle. So let's draw a circular shape. Hold down your pen so it turns into a circular shape. Click on the screen to make it a perfect circle. Make sure it doesn't go off the edge. And then we can click edit shape and kind of move it around. And you know, we want to leave a little bit of room on each side, but in order to get it perfectly in the middle, we will click on the arrow tool. Make sure snapping and magnetics are turned on and then let's just kind of drag it around. And when you see the yellow lines, that means it's perfectly in the center there. So we saw the yellow line for the vertical or for, you know, left to right. And then we want to see both of them to make sure we have it centered top to bottom as well. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Okay, so take your time to do that. And then we are going to drag our white color on, oh, drag our white color on the outside to fill in that area there. So then we just have our center showing and then we are gonna add everything underneath this layer. So this will be the top layer until we add our sun at the end, which will go on top of this. But for right now, everything will be under this layer. So let's go ahead and add a new layer and then drag it underneath of this one. Go to our color palette and select the second color on the top row. Same monoline brush, same 100%. And what we're gonna do is first draw the mountains in the background. We wanna be able to see a little bit of sky and we wanna add some clouds back there. So let's start about two thirds of the way up. And we're just gonna kind of draw a pointy shape. Nothing too perfect. It's easier for me to go horizontal. So let's actually start about two thirds up on this side. Let's make some kind of pointy shapes like this. A little bit bigger one here and then one that kind of goes off the edge over here and then let's fill that in underneath if you're having trouble filling it in just make sure that your lines went all the way off the canvas on each side okay so that's our first set of mountains in the very background i actually just want a little bit more room in the sky so i'm going to click the arrow tool and drag it down just a little bit there we go okay so now we're going to add um a now we're gonna add another hill. So let's go to our layer menu, add a new layer, click on our colors and grab the third color on the top row, same brush. And this time we're gonna do more of like one hill that's gonna go, you know, about to here, about two thirds of the way over, but we're gonna start here. 
and it's just gonna be kind of like a wavy line to about there and a wavy line back and then we are going to fill that in okay and let's actually move this up a little bit okay and then yeah we just want to leave at least like a third below this and let's just add a little bit more kind of like right here kind of show that that's you know much bigger on that side there then we're going to go to our layer menu add a new layer click on our colors grab the fourth color here same brush that we've been using and we're going to come from about halfway on this side now and do a very similar thing we're going to kind of cross over this part here and then we're going to end about you know right in here so let's just start make a little wavy line right about there is good and then we will go back over fill it in it's not quite big enough but i don't want to go down any further because i want this to be a good section of water here so we are going to kind of go up further let's just kind of extend right in here there we go and then fill that in okay that looks good so okay so now we want to add some highlights and shadows to our mountains give them a little texture so we are going to go to our original dark green mountain here click on that layer click on it turn on alpha lock and then we are going to go to our color menu, select the third color on the top row, click on our brushes and the brush that we're going to be using for this is under the textures section and it's the grunge brush. And let's see, we have our size at about 50% and we are just going to lightly add some texture to the tops of the mountain. Let's just kind of do it on both sides, mostly on this side because our sun is going to go over here. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other ones. Um, we didn't add a shadow on this one because it's just so far in the background and it's already really dark, but we will add a shadow on the other two. So let's click on this next one and click on the layer click on alpha lock to turn that on go to our color palette and select the fourth color which is one lighter than the original one that we used same brush and we're going to add some highlights here and then click on our colors again and click on the very first color the darkest green or sorry the second color in the color palette but the you know first color that we use for our mountains and run that along the bottom area we're going to do this pretty lightly and keep your pen kind of at an angle so that it's not too thick when you lay it on and then we're going to do a similar thing to the next mountain so click on that layer turn on alpha lock and we are going to grab the very last color in the top row and that'll be our highlight color you can hold your pen a little more upright when you get right towards the very top to kind of add it a little thicker there and then we are going to go back to our color palette and select the third color on the top row and that'll be our shadow color so we'll add a little bit of that down here okay so that is it for our mountains now we need our water so we are going to use the same color as we did for the sky so we can grab that color by holding down on the screen with your finger and now we have that color otherwise it is the first color in the color palette but we are going to go to our layers menu and we are going to add a new layer and we want it to be on top of our green dark green mountains in the back but below these two more hilly layers that we did in front so add a new layer on top of that one and then we are just going to grab the selection tool and let's just do freehand turn on color fill and let's just kind of draw right in here connect your shape 
and touch that dot at the end if it didn't really connect and then that'll fill it in. Okay, so now let's add some texture and move into our water. So let's use the layer that we're on now, click on it, turn on alpha lock, go to our color palette and select the first color on the second row. Go to our brushes and we are going to select the elements category, ocean, and we want to make sure our canvas is upright. If it's tilted at all, our waves will be crooked. So we want to make sure it's perfectly upright and then let's just use our pen and lightly draw some waves in here. Make some areas thicker than others. Doesn't have to be anything perfect. Maybe make this part a little darker in the back. Move them between the mountains. Awesome. Okay, so next we are going to add our rocks. So we are going to go to our layer menu, add a new layer on top of this one. And let's actually drag it up above our hills, but below the white circle layer. And we're going to go to our color palette, select the third color on the top row. And we are going to go back to our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. And let's turn the size down to about 60%. And we're just going to draw some rock shapes. And they aren't going to be perfect. Um, we don't want them to be perfect. They are rocks. So, you know, we want to make them mostly straight on the bottom and then obviously like, you know, a curve on the top to, to make the shape of the rock. But we don't need to like make the bottom like perfectly straight or anything like that. Um, but we're just going to make some bigger, some smaller, some longer, skinnier, you know, just kind of bury them and their shapes. And what we want to do though is make sure that the ones that are like closest to us here are a bit bigger or like some of them are bigger. They don't all have to be bigger, but we're not going to have a rock like this big all the way back here. You know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't really look like that. I mean, it's possible, but you know, for our sake, we're just going to make the bigger ones up front and just kind of space them out pretty randomly. Again, some of them can kind of go like above the hills here. That's why we put this layer in front. And let's just add one more little one up here. Okay, that looks pretty good. So just kind of a random assortment of rocks. Let's make this front one just a little bit bigger. Okay. Awesome, now we're gonna add some texture to these. So again, go to your layers menu, click on this layer, turn on alpha lock, go to the color palette and select this fourth color on the second row. Go back to your brush menu and textures and grunge. And let's see, we can probably drop the brush down to about 40-ish percent. Is that too big still? Yes. Yeah, let's drop our brush to about 20%. And we are going to just lightly add some texture and highlights to the tops of all of our rocks. Okay, so now another thing that we're going to do is first and foremost, we are going to add some more like shadows to the hills and the rocks, but it's not even so much as a sh of a shadow as it is like where the water is constantly hitting a rock, hitting the rocks and the hills. And it kind of leaves like that, you know, 
line where the water is always hitting. So let's start with our rock since we're on that layer already. So let's go and grab our fifth color on the second row here of the color palette. And then the brush that we're going to use for this is under the inking section. It is the Pandani brush. I believe that's how you say that. And let's see, we are going to do about 55%. And let's make our opacity 60. We don't want it to be super, super thick. Okay, yeah, that looks good. So then, yes, we're just going to drag and draw a little line at the very bottom of each of our rocks pretty lightly. It doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line. Kind of follow the shape of your rock bottom. If your rocks are really close together like this be careful that you're not like accidentally adding to the top of your other rock and you can turn your size down if you need to a little bit to avoid that Okay, and then we're gonna do a very similar thing to our hills. So let's go and find our front hill here. And we are going to grab the second color on the top row, the really dark green to do this. And same size and everything. Let's just go ahead and draw our line across the bottom. Make it a little thicker than the rock lines probably. Go up a little higher, really make that you know pretty bold and then we are going to same color and brush we're just going to switch to our back hill here and do the same thing okay so that just adds a little more definition and then now we are going to add a little bit more to the water so we are going to go ahead and using the same brush even, we are going to go and switch to our water layer, this layer here, and we are going to switch to the second color on the second row of the color palette. And again, same brush, we are going to add some kind of highlights to the water. Let's change the size down to about 30. And we are going to add some highlights to the water a lot of them like right around the rocks where the rocks would maybe be like causing the water to ricochet off and cause some like ripples. But some of them can just be, you know, by themselves. Again, we're kind of adding like less highlights back here because it should be a little darker since it's back in that channel there. Okay, and then lastly, we are going to add some right around the edges of the water, or sorry, the edges of the hills. Again, where the water would kind of like be ricocheting off the bottom of the hill there. Okay, that looks great. So we are done with all the bottom stuff. Now we are gonna start on the clouds and the sun really quick. So in our layers menu, we are going to add a new layer behind this last hill that we drew. So we're gonna add a new layer on top of it, drag it below. So it should be the very first layer above the background. And we are going to grab the fourth color on the last row and switch back to our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. 
and draw some hills back here. Nothing crazy. We're just going to draw some kind of rough squiggly lines. And I wanted to draw the mountains first so that we kind of knew where we wanted to fill in space. So let's start kind of over here and draw some like that. Connect it to the outside so that we can fill it in. And then do the same thing on the other side. And again, connect it to the outside to fill it in. And those are our cloud shapes. We'll add the sun up here, but we're gonna add some texture to the clouds. So let's go and do what we do best. Click on the layer, turn on alpha lock, grab the color palette, select the last color on the last row, switch back to our grunge brush under the texture area, turn the size up to about 50%. And we're just gonna add some highlights and texture to the tippy tops of our clouds. And then since they are clouds and they have a lot more, you know, variation to them, we're going to also like add some little sections of highlights here where maybe the cloud shape is a little different. So, you know, just, just like that. Okay. And lastly, we're going to add our sun. So we are gonna do that above everything. So select the top layer, our circle outline, add a new layer above that. Grab the first color on the last row of our color palette and go back to our monoline brush once again under the calligraphy menu and draw a sun towards the upper left of the screen going off into the white area just a little bit. Make it a little bit bigger and then fill it in. Make sure it filled in really good. You might have a little edge here. If you do have a little edge where it's not filled in, where the middle meets the outside, what you need to do is, we'll just redraw the shape so that I can show you. What you need to do is when you drag the color, this, keep your pen on the screen and then you can drag it left and right and it should fill in that extra space if you have one. Okay, and now that that's there, we're going to lastly, very last step is add the texture to this. So click on this layer, turn on alpha lock, grab the second color on the last row, go back to our grunge brush, and we are going to add some highlights to the top left here. And then grab this third color on the last row, the darker orange, and add that on the bottom right. And that is our drawing. I hope you had fun. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna see more tutorials from me in the future. And if you wanna share your drawing on Instagram, I would love to see it. So go ahead and post it and then tag me so that I can check it out. While you're there, go ahead and give me a follow so that you can see what I'm working on next. Thanks for watching.